A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Officer could be an artistic statement, a claim to official renown. No, you're a police officer, sir. The idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Like a cat rubbing itself against its owner's calves. A cat that wants you to smoke a lot. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It's you. It's obviously you. You smell like liquor. And you're orange. See? Everyone agrees it's your color scheme. We're on the right track with this name thing. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a first discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Eno that founds empires and lays waste to cities? Virile, uncaring towards the little things? Probably not, no. So desperately mundane. You need to funk this case up. It's all part of the master plan, you see. It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh, tattoos and tendons. Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are Hundreds of them, all together. Like whirls of floorboards, the design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vitae and ebony, perhaps. If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross-sections would look like. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections, peaking on the right sabaton, where you notice. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead. Dabba doob doob dead. The beauty, the truth, the poetry of it all. There is silence on the other end of the line. No, please, no more suicide threats. Thank God you don't have that stupid gun anymore. There are way more inventive ways than a gun to leave this world. Oh, right. Can you tell me when you've taken him away then? Yeah, keep her in the loop. It's strangely enjoyable to report back on the minute progress you've made, even to strangers. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. You sure are, my man. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries. 
and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ask for his conclusion. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. The problem? The damn kips are showing a real good game lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other introduced species too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Cultural victory? What is this then? It's what the kips of Boogie Street are going for, right under our noses. And the others too, on the radio. Heard any chanson lately? Heard any mochettos or leader? No. Dominating culture is how they plan to win. This is so themselves. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wake. But it'll play that. Any requiem really. Also dirges, madrigals, chants. As long as it's on tape. Sounds like he's already heard the Requiem for all life forms, and wasn't that impressed. Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even though, I don't really like music. That's odd. Why doesn't he like music? The stuff I record myself... Silverware shaking in drawers as motor cars race by. Nocturnal animals climbing on the roof. Airship rotors. That kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe you should ditch music as well. Get into these more experimental sounds he's describing. The light pole has been carefully cut and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. His theory isn't exactly incoherent, but its logic does suggest some unusual neural activity. Interesting. Rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it, well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. Welcome back, gentlemen. What can I do for you? Deploying high-concept buzzword generator. All systems functional. Ready to engage in... Three, two, one. It's time to disrupt the future. You've got to stay lean, innovative, and focus on what matters most. The children. A youth center, huh? What kind of youth center? A place to train buff kids. A place to teach them practical skills like teamwork and self-discipline. Come on. Tell him what he wants to hear. Brilliant. Without children, who'll be there to buy stuff in the future? When life closes a door, it opens a window, yes? What's the expected return on this? You're deep into ultra-liberal territory now. Good work. Very impressive. You've got a natural eye for unusual investment opportunities. I don't normally do this without a formal pitch deck, but to hell with it. What's the point of being rich if you have to follow all the rules? Welcome back, gentlemen. What can I do for you? What's worse than throwing money at something that's already failed? He should what? A volunteer police force. And why would I do that? I don't believe in handouts, especially for people who volunteer for their positions. Still, the 
idea of a privatized police force is extremely forward thinking. You could even say it's ultra, ultra liberal. Tell me, if you could invest in DRCM, where would you direct your resources? Bigger guns. Large caliber motherfuckers that leave exit wounds the size of grapefruits. The latest technological wonders. Take care of the people who protect the people. I don't believe in giving anyone money for nothing, but maybe there is something to using market incentives to improve performance. If I could interject, the RCM's problems are mainly structural. We are hamstrung by a lack of clear lines of authority, and our system of performance reviews strongly disincentivizes interprising cooperation. I think the lieutenant's right. Your problems run much deeper than equipment or funding. The entire org structure of the RCM needs to be redefined. You need a unified chain of command. New metrics for measuring performance that reward the real police work. Does that sound right? Yes, yes. That's precisely what we need. Hell no! Can you imagine how much work that would take? Why would I do that when I can just speculate on exotic financial derivatives from the comfort of this shipping container? The thing about investing is that the less work you have to do, the better. Don't overthink. That's what return on investment means. The lieutenant's disappointment is palpable. It's like someone just shot his dog. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. That's another light motif associated with moralism. But the years have changed that. I don't know what I believe in now. No, I believe in the RCM. That's enough for me. Do you? What is this shit? Fucking on yourself? This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Well played. No one saw that coming. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. The waterline recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. She hasn't actually said it to every drunk in town. It was spoken in jest. Of course you're not. It was only a joke. Okay. How about Cordelechi 19? Why? Because it was manufactured in Revishal East by a company called Cordelechi, and its hull is 19 paces long. She makes a point of being unromantic about it. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... Why do you think so? What she calls corruption is simply an aesthetic category. Point taken. But enough about Evrart. What else can I do for you? This... reality. Yes, reality is your side case. An experimental side case. Caillou, as you already know. 
Imagine a pebble. A smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea, misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch, the Martinez distributary. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her and to humanity at large. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. She likes the totality of it. All that untaxed income must have fueled the new. That can only mean one thing. Yes, and quantitative easing. It was a market mirage, unfortunately. The 40s dispelled it. An Isola wide hangover, you might say. So, here we are. Welcome to reality, baby. A devil, who being of great charm and guile, sneaketh into the homes of the godly. That dialect is obisunt. You recognize it's a quote from somewhere, a play written way back in the Franco-Nigerian century. All right. What next? Suddenly, you're not so sure you're part of the supra culture. And what would that be? <laughs> I can see that, yes. I dabble in those dark arts myself, not so long ago. I assure you, it was a thoroughly supracultural phenomenon. All permeating. Downright mandatory. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. It must be. This is the greatest and the kindest arrangement the atoms had in them. Great bodies of water. Forest-covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. It must be. This is the greatest and the kindest arrangement the atoms had in them. Because this is no ordinary wall, it is sublime. Look at it. The shadows. The colors. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Warcraft. Color peeled from the very face of God. Your hands shake as they reach for the wall. Oh, wall father. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. Hmm. Sure. I suppose we have to pass by it again at some point anyway. He isn't even drawn right. I have grand plans for you, man from Hyomda. She gestures her diabolical hand toward an array of potions and unguents. First, you shall please me. Then, lead my armies against the vicious cannibals. Not a muscle moves in the face of the man from Hyomda. Yet inside, there is turmoil. This goes against all he holds sacrosanct. This is beyond primitive. Perhaps for a layman, deep analysis is necessary to peel back the multi-layered meaning. Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Good luck finding it. He's not much of a character, I think you'll find. Just a stand-in for the reader. The point is for the reader to feel like they're solving the crime, along with Dick Mullen. A crude narrative convention, but no less effective for it. I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. Symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. 
Your gun, yes. Do you want to talk about something else now? He seems to be in some sort of loop. What? This? It's just seasonal clothing. Where is this going? Interesting. I think it's called a brain. It's no mere brain. Okay, Art Cup. What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. But this isn't an old school case. We all have our different mediums. His is written. You look like shit. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You can't leave it like that. Spin it on its head. Engage Cap's lock. What? Push it more. Harder. Be more intelligent. Ah, oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. Okay, yes. You get the joke. Leave it at that. Fucking deranged lunatic. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. But you have more important things to worry about. More important than a missing expedition? I don't know. Expeditions often lead to something interesting. Some fringe science is exactly what's needed right now. Spice up that vanilla murder investigation. Are you sure we have time to go chasing after bug hunters just now? Gravity anomaly? Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and the sunken car. Well, napalm ants, for example, are used in some rites of passage rituals. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? Because it's the most working class death you've ever seen. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. Condensation from stepping inside. Unreal. God. Oh no, it's one of those show don't tell things, isn't it? A brush, an artist. The red splatter is urban expressionism. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. They just might be. Rough stuff. If you take the ride, you'd be wise to buckle your little pig belly up. Her neurons must be on fire. The heat creating waves and ripples in all she sees. Above all, in her painting. You don't have the skills to execute something like this in practice. But, oh boy, the idea's going to blow her fucking mind. She squints her eyes. On fire. I say, sod off. You don't have the technical skills to do that. Didn't we all? I like your idea. Should have thought of it myself. I don't need this kind of competition in my neighborhood. Then get your brush from fucking art. Oops, my apologies. I guess I was trying too hard. But fine, take the brush. I'm all out of fuel oil anyway. 
You know what you should be able to find in your government-issued vehicle? Red-dyed heavy fuel oil. Are you kidding me? Fuel oil is so much cooler. No way you're disfiguring that beautiful wall with something as pedestrian as ordinary paint. My fuel oil is for my kinema. Use your own fuel if you are unable to contain your artistic impulses, but please, leave my kinema out of it. Why does art inspire you so much? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Of course not. It's autism, box drawing, masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Only the most experimental kind. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Quit being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street. You must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. Paintbrush? Check. Heavy fuel oil? Check. Now the only thing left to do is paint the wall. The paintbrush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Yeah, lawman. Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Yeah, your mother. It's not a very good mother joke, but the room still laughs. Something about those mother jokes just works. Unless we've veered off into a 4 m dimension, I'm expecting to step out on the roof. We could ask Class here about this route. See how she reacts? Folded M Dimension, a reference to the popular science fiction series, In System. Look who's in a good mood suddenly, and read science fiction. Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be at unease. All national literatures are... only the name of the nation changes. What about Revisholian literature? People sometimes reveal things about themselves when they discuss such matters. No. Revachulian lit is about how magnificent and serious Revachul is. It's about how you have to save the world. What's on it? We call it the Dorgan Omega Mix. 
You'll know why, won't you listen to it? Now that is intriguing. You had me a door gunner. You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Yeah, like you have one, smart ass. Sure, service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranese lit? Yes. This is the very essence of Oranese lit. A moment's respite. Dark and hopeless is the struggle itself. Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. We hanged. Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs, that's short for... Yeah, good man. Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked? People after her? Moral intern, people. This is an Oranese lit. But I know the time of the call, too. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you officers, but I am now. She sounds like a sixth grader, apologizing. It also makes Glazia almost an allochronim for Katarazina Alazia. It was a sentimental thing. I want it to be more me here, this time. So I used my nickname. A nickname? Who gave you this nickname, Glazia? A teenage boy. A million years ago. Of the king, of the nation, of communism, return on investment. I don't know exactly. It's meant to be vague, as promises generally are. But at the same time, I mean, things can't go on like this forever. Something will give. It always does. It's an empty vessel, an amphora waiting to be filled. Something always returns from the past. It's how the future happens. Many guesses turn out to have been right. <laughs>